Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back to Football Discussions. Today we're coming at you with our mock draft. I believe this is 15.0, so 15 mock drafts in. Mock, mock drafts in, pardon me. Uh, this is going to be a three-rounder with trades. These are trades that I all think are realistic based off reports that have come out recent as today. Uh, I'll dive a little more into those when we come around to it, but let's get started with the first pick in this 2020 NFL draft. We have the Cincinnati Bengals going Joe Burrow. I saw a YouTube comment the other day in a mock draft that I was watching that said, we all know Joe Burrow is going number one overall. Who needs an explanation anymore? And I'm going to leave it right there. It's Joe Burrow at the number one pick. At the number two pick, this is kind of the same situation as Joe Burrow. This has been set in stone since the draft order was set in stone. I mean, the Washington Redskins, they they do have a strong defensive line. But to me, uh, getting Chase Young would make their defensive line one of the best in the NFL. Their front seven would be ridiculous. Um, Obviously, they drafted Montez Sweat last year, who brought in production. You have Ryan Kerrigan, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and then Chase Young. Matt Iadonis as well in there. I think it would be a really strong defensive line. And Ron Rivera's strength is defense. So I think it's only best for them to go. Uh, Chase Young here. At three, I do have the I don't have a trade down situation here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one being the uh, the Dolphins and the Chargers seem content on taking Tua or Herbert. Right there hasn't, which is bad in my opinion and rare, but there hasn't been one team saying you know we like Tua or we like Herbert like definitively better. Like it's uh, we have Tua a mile ahead of Herbert. So for that reason, I actually have. The them sitting at their spots, not trading up, and just getting the quarterback that falls to them. So while I'm sure the Lions will act, will actually be actively calling the Dolphins and Chargers on draft night, trying to get more value while still being able, able to pick up Okuda at five or six, they're going to have to settle for him at three in this mock. At four, this has kind of been uh, put in place for a while now. Giants taking Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker out of Clemson. They could go offensive tackle, but uh, I feel like they're going to go best pe- player available. And Isaiah Simmons is a do-it-all guy. Uh, he can play edge. He can play linebacker. He can play safety. He can play nickel, really do it all. So I think it, it, it adds a dynamic piece to the Giants' defense that they're uh, definitely in need of. At five, I have the Dolphins going to a tongue below other quarterback out of Alabama. This one's interesting for a couple of reasons, one being the fact that, you know, Tua, we don't really know what the situation is with him, right? So he it came out earlier this week that he failed two teams' physicals. Are the Dolphins on that list? We don't really know. But I think that can make for an interesting scenario is Tua falling down draft boards. Could we see Herbert go here at five, which I know I've seen on Bell Kuyper and Todd McShay's recent mock drafts, them debating whether to go Herbert or Tua at five. So it's a toss-up in my opinion. But to me, Tua is still the better player. So I'm going to ride with Tua for now. At six, I know Chargers uh, fans have hated every time I mock this pick, but to me, Herbert is the best quarterback available after Tua, and you're still in need of a quarterback, right? So uh, it feels like that Anthony Lynn is all on board the Tyra Taylor train, and if that holds to be true, I say you still draft Herbert because, in my opinion, Herbert isn't a play now type guy at the moment. I think that he needs time to develop, and if you were able to get uh, a season of strong production with a roster that's really good right now in LA with Tyra Taylor, so be it, and then you turn to Herbert for the future. I really like that move. So I think. For Regardless, you're going to take Herbert here at six. At seven, the first trade comes up. Denver trades 15, 95, and a three next year, uh, as well as Royce Freeman to the Panthers for seven. Panthers just signed CMC to a four-year extension worth $16 million per year, which is the highest paid running back in NFL history. So you're obviously going to want to preserve him. At the moment, to me, the Panthers do not have a strong enough backup running back, a guy that can take the heavy hits on the goal line or in third and one situations. And uh, preserving Christian McCaffrey has to be their number one priority. So bringing in Royce Freeman allows them not only to take a little of the load off CMC, but allows them to keep him healthy under those four years, allow him to keep being the productive running back that we've seen um, and let Royce Freeman, you know, take the brutal hits. And he he's built for that. You know, he has the size and strength to do that. So I think getting Royce Freeman a strong backup in Carolina uh, allows them to have that uh, I wouldn't even say one two punch because obviously CMC is going to be the main guy, but allows them to have that thunder every time Lightning needs a rest. So uh, I think that's a smart trade, as well as the fact that they're getting a third in this draft and a third in next draft. I think it's good value for uh, the Panthers. That all being said, 
The Broncos now move up for Henry Ruggs, who's a beast wide receiver out of Alabama. Ruggs has speed, uh, great hands, is able to run the entire route tree, in my opinion, really the whole package. I, I do understand why teams have uh, CD and Judy valued above Ruggs, but to me, I think the Broncos, uh, Ruggs is their number one wide receiver on their board. So they're going to trade up, lock that in, and have one of the most dynamic offenses in the NFL next year. At eight, I saw a report earlier this week that you could say that said you could put it in ink if the if uh, Derek Brown is still on the board um, at eight to the Cardinals. So I I'm gonna do that here. He's still on the board, and the Cardinals do need interior defensive line help. What you could argue offensive tackle is the most important need. Uh, they did sign DJ Humphrey, so they have help on one side, and it's a deep tackle class, so uh, they can get a. Uh, offensive tackle later in the draft they they do not have a second round pick but in the third round they could go that route so uh i think Derek brown is going to be the pick here at eight at nine our next trade the buccaneers trade a 14 uh or the 14th pick the 45th pick and the uh one the 139th pick as well as a four next year four nine from the jaguars uh to me i think the jaguars would love to get their hands on okuda or Derek Brown, but in this scenario, he didn't fall to either of them. Uh, I think their next best look is Kinlaw or CJ Henderson. And to me, uh, they could trade back and get more value for this pick and still get Kinlaw or Henderson. So they're going to trade. So the Buccaneers who seem interested in trading up to lock in their number one tackle on their board, which in my opinion is Tristan Wirfs, uh, they're going to trade up here, lock that in, and protect Tom Brady. At 10, the Browns are going to go tackle. It's going to be Mekhi Becton, the offensive tackle out of Louisville. Becton has size, strength. I think he's like 6'7", with at like 370, which is absurd. And he's also an athletic freak. He ran a 5'1'1", with that uh, height and weight that I just read out. So I think that's a ridiculous athlete, a guy that can uh, develop into a really good pass blocker. Obviously, you're going to get a run now. Uh, type blocker in Cleveland. You brought in Andy Janovich with the trade from the Broncos. It looks like the Browns are transitioning to a full run team. You have Nick Chubb, you have Kareem Hunt. Now you have a beast run blocker and you have a beast fullback. I think it's a solid uh, offseason pairing between Janovich and Becton to really boost your run game in Cleveland next year. At 11, to me, this is one of the deeper wide receiver classes we've seen in a pretty long time. So uh, the Jets, while I'm sure they would love to get their hands on a CD Lamb or Jerry Judy, are going to go Jedrick Wills, the offensive tackle out of Alabama. Uh, Wills is a right tackle that can plug and play right away. Uh, a good pass blocker, a good run blocker. I think he has the whole package. And uh, I think the Jets are really looking to, to protect Sam Darnold more than anything. So Wills is going to be the pick for them. At 12, I have the Raiders going CD Lamb, the wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Um, it feels like Henderson is a fast riser, so I think the wild card here would be for the Raiders to go corner now, but uh, I don't see them doing that. I think uh, CD Lamb is far too good of a player to pass up on, so uh, they're going to nab their number one wide receiver left on their board at 12. At 13, it, uh, when the 49ers traded this pick, I texted my friend immediately. I was like, oh my God, or what are they doing? They shipped that to Forrest Buckner. What are they going to do now? It felt like that whole time they had a plan. And shortly after, it, it came into uh, the public eye that they were focused in on Jerry Judy. So that's what I have them doing here. They're going to take Jerry Judy, uh, the wide receiver out of Alabama, probably the best route runner I've seen in a very long time out of any draft class. So I think that uh, it would be a really nice pick for – uh, the 49ers to pair Judy with Debo. At 14, the Jaguars traded back, and now they're going to get their number one wide receiver on their board, C.J. Henderson, out of Florida, blanket and coverage. It came out today that 40% of GMs uh, have – Henderson, or I guess not Henderson, but uh, Okuda as their second ranked cornerback, which would mean, which would lead me to believe that Henderson is their first ranked, which is uh, really surprising to me because, in my opinion, I always thought Okuda was miles ahead of anyone else. But uh, we'll see how it goes. And I think Henderson is a good player, blanket and coverage, like I said. So being able to grab him here at 14 would be a solid pick for the Jaguars. At 15, I have the Panthers going to Javon Kinlaw, the interior defensive lineman out of South Carolina. They traded back. I'm sure they would have loved to get their hands on Henderson, but Kinlaw is a good consolation prize, can slide into that interior defensive lineman uh, position right away, can play 3-4 end and get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, he's really talented at going going uh, from that interior defensive lineman to the quarterback. I think that's a rare trait, and if the Panthers were able to bring in a freak athlete like Kinlaw, then it would be a good move for them and their defense. At 16, we have another trade here. Vikings were able to pick up two first-round picks, and the Falcons obviously would have probably loved Kinlaw. They would have loved Henderson. Um, and now, you know, 
they could go uh, Caleb on chase on, but to me, they want more value for this pick because Kinlaw and Henderson are off the board, which are probably their top two picks right now. They're going to trade back with the Vikings, who, like I said earlier, got another first round pick for Stefan Diggs, who are going to trade 22 and 58 and a three next year. Um, 416 from the Falcons slide up and get Justin Jefferson to play right away alongside Adam Thielen. I think Jefferson is a clean route runner. Showed us he had elite speed at the combine. Uh, great hands. Really was the whole package this year at LSU. So I think uh, getting Justin Jefferson should be a priority for the uh, Vikings so they can have another dynamic wide receiver that can slide into Stefan Diggs' place right away. At 17, I do have the Cowboys going. Kayla Von Chase on the edge rusher out of LSU. Chase on is a really do it all guy. Uh, gets to the quarterback, slides back in coverage. I was watching the uh, LSU Florida game, and, and and you saw it a lot. You know, the running back would slide out, or a tight end who uh, looked like he was blocking would do it like a block and release route. And Caleb on Chase on was really good at covering those routes, which I think is rare from the edge spot. Really came into his own as an edge rusher towards the end of the season. Started racking up more sacks, and he's also a run stopping beast. You know, he can shed run blocks very uh, well. One of the better run run block shedders that I've seen in a really long time. So I think getting Caleb on chase on from that edge spot would be a really solid pick for the uh, Cowboys and the steal. In my opinion, I think he's like number 11 on my big board. So uh, I like that pick a lot. At 18, this is the dream scenario for the Miami Dolphins, and I'm hard-pressed to believe that it would go this way, but just in this mock draft, I think uh, it it fell this way just because of the trades that happened earlier and the fact that the Giants didn't take offensive tackle. Uh, So the Dolphins are going to have Andrew Thomas slide all the way down to them and get a beast. Uh, he to me has the highest floor out of anyone in this, out of any tackle in this draft class. You know he can come in and he can start right away. Uh, I think his ceiling is pretty high too. I think that uh, his ceiling is underratedly high, and you know we saw him fall. Uh, at at the start of draft season, really down draft boards, and he slowly uh, built his way back up to the top where he was mid or during the season. So I think that Andrew Thomas is definitely a plug and play player for the Dolphins. They can solidify uh, the left side of their de- offensive line right away. They brought in Eric Flowers, and you'll see later in this draft I have them focusing in an offensive line just because they did a really good job of addressing uh, other needs in free agency. At nineteen. Uh, that's not what that should say. It should say uh, Xavier McKinney, the you know, safety out of Alabama. But McKinney to the Raiders, you lost Carla Joseph. You want to get another uh, good safety on your defense, and I think Xavier McKinney is that guy. Uh, he can play box. He can play nickel, uh, and he can play free safety as well. You know, He can slide all over the field, great in coverage, a really good tackler, I think, that uh, Delpit got the hype at the start of the season, but we've seen McKinney really become safety one in this class. So I think it's a solid pick for the Raiders. At 20, I have the Jaguars going safety as well. Uh, you They could reach on interior defensive line here, but safety is a need of theirs, and Grant Delpit is one of the best to do it uh, in this class. Where that's seven at LSU, won the Jim Thorpe Award, although that was controversial. So I think Delpit is a beast of a player and can play right away for Jacksonville. At 21, the Eagles seem to be in love with Justin Jefferson, and for them not to get him here due to the Vikings trade would probably be devastating to them. But getting Kenneth Murray is a, a solid constellation prize. I know it's different positions, but Kenneth Murray is a beast linebacker from Oklahoma, can tackle really well, and is underrated in coverage, in my opinion. So uh, I think it's a good pick for the Eagles. At 22, the Falcons traded back. Now they're going to get Christian Fulton, the quarterback out of LSU. Uh, Fulton is going back up my draft board. I think he fell really hard after the national championship game, and to me that's unfair. We've seen his consistency for two years at LSU being one of the better defensive players on that team. Uh, Solid in coverage. game in and game out, except for the national championship game, has struggled with injuries, which is another reason why I feel like he slid down draft boards. But I think Fulton is definitely an NFL cornerback, and it would be a good pick for the Falcons to do uh, at 22 due to the fact that they traded away de- or let go of Desmond Trufant uh, and don't really have a corner one on their team. At 23, I have the Patriots going AJ Ampaneza. You could argue Jordan Love is going to be the pick here, but uh, they were actually one of the few teams to not interview with Love. So I, or a few quarterback needy teams. So I think that Empaneza is a good pick here. He's a three, four end in my opinion. He can also play four, three if you need him to, but uh, can play that interior defensive line spot and generate pressure. So I think it's a good pick for uh, the Pats to get a guy that can not only stop the run, but can get to the quarterback. 
At 24, I have the Saints going Jordan Love, the quarterback out of Utah State. Uh, it seems like Sean Payton has basically solidified the fact that Drew Brees is retiring next year. So I say they start building for the future now. I think they would highly consider going Kenneth Murray if he was still on the board, but we saw the Eagles take him. And while Patrick Queen is a great linebacker, in my opinion, I don't think he fits what they have going on that New Orleans defense. So I think they're going to go Jordan Love, the quarterback out of Utah State at 24. At 25, I had the Vikings going Jeff Gladney, cornerback out of TCU. So a really solid first round here for the Vikings because they go Jefferson by trading up, and they also go Gladney. Uh, so they fill two major holes on their team, one at wide receiver and one at cornerback. I think that would be a solid first round for them. At 26, we see the Dolphins going uh, lineman again. Uh, you know, you could argue running back here, but to me it's a little early. I think there's really good running backs in this class, and you'll see uh, one goes at the end of the first round, and then they kind of trickle down towards the end of the second round just based off team needs. Uh, but Cesar Ruiz is a solid player. He can slide in uh, to a guard spot or the center spot. He's versatile. So getting uh, Eric Flowers and um, – Cesar Ruiz on one team I think would be a solid fit as well as you already drafted Andrew Thomas so they're really starting to build a young offensive line in Miami if they're doing uh what the what I'm doing in this mock draft which again probably won't happen at 27 I have the Eagles trading uh back up into the first round another report came out today that said um you can basically count on two things in this draft one being that uh Joe Burrow going at number one and the Seahawks tra- and the other being the Se- Seahawks trading down their first round pick. So I have that happening here. Uh, the Eagles are trading back into the first round, getting uh, Denzel Mims, the wide receiver out of Baylor. It's going to cost them an arm and leg. Uh, they're trading 53, 103, which is their third round pick and 127, which is one of their three fourth round picks, as well as a second next year to the Seahawks for 27. So the Seahawks are getting a solid uh, load there for this pick, as well as, um, you know, getting a second next year. So I think if the Eagles who desperately need wide receiver pass on rugs or sorry, Jeff or uh, pass on getting a wide receiver at 20 or 19, 21, sorry. Uh, then they have to trade back up here and get Denzel Mims uh, at 27. At 28, I have the Ravens going Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen fits the Ravens defense, in my opinion. He's a pass coverage linebacker, a little undersized, but is a good linebacker, solid tackler. And I think he'll fit right in, in Baltimore. At 29, uh, Yutur Gross Matos is still on the board, but I think uh, getting Zach Bond, who can is a versatile player, can play edge, uh, as well as slide um, into off-the-ball outside linebacker, you know, in a 4-3 set, is a, is a talented player and can be a solid scheme fit for the Vikings. So I think having him alongside Harold Landry would make it for a solid pair for the Titans. At 30, and this is a guy who slid up and down my draft boards, but Jalen Rieger to me uh, is a solid player. He has one of the lowest catch percentages in this draft class, but uh, that does have to do with his quarterback. He had a freshman quarterback last year who wasn't the best. So I think Jalen Rieger can really succeed at the next level and develop into a solid player. At 31, this is a guy that's quickly rising up my draft board. Uh, Jalen Johnson out of Utah, has the length, has the side, has the speed, underrated player in my opinion, and definitely is having first round buzz along with uh, AJ Terrell might slide up into the first round now. Trayvon Diggs, we could see his name called in the first round. It all depends on what GMs think and what they uh, have as scheme fits in my opinion. Uh, But I think Jalen Johnson fits the San Francisco 49ers um, team and he doesn't have to move very far, you know, stays out on the West Coast. So I think it's a solid pick for the Niners. At 32, the first running back off the board. Uh, I know Chiefs fans love to uh, say that they don't want to take a running back in the first round, which uh, I get it because running back is an undervalued position now in the NFL, and uh, you, you guys love Damian Williams. But to me, if you get DeAndre Swift on your offense, that makes your offense impossible to stop like impossible right because you already have to worry about what Patrick Mahomes is going to do and then you now have an every down running back and DeAndre Swift who can uh, not only pass protect can catch the ball out of the backfield just like Damian Williams um, and can run the ball extremely well I think that makes it so hard for defenses to scheme against you and I think it would be a really smart pick if the Chiefs if Cesar Ruiz isn't on the board for the Chiefs to go uh, DeAndre Swift the running back out of Georgia All right, so starting round two, the explanations are going to be a little shorter here because uh, obviously the first round guys are the big names, but let's get right into it. Starting off with the 33rd overall pick. This shouldn't say via trade, sorry, uh, but I have the 
Bengals going Yaturgros Matos, edge rusher out of Penn State. Uh, Yaturgros Matos is a beast, gets to the quarterback, is a good run stopper, uh, is a freak athlete, and I think that uh, his name – Probably will be called on day one, but just the way that uh, this this draft shaped out due to the fact that I thought Zach Bond fit better in the Titans team, I've heard Gross Matos falling. I know Bengals fans want wide receiver because uh, they have two wide receivers on their roster that are going to be up for contract next year and probably won't be able to re-sign both of them. So I understand that that's a need, but you could always focus on that next year and next year's draft, which is a stacked draft class with guys like uh, Brashad Bateman, um, Jamar Chase, Rondell Moore, uh, Jalen Waddell. So obviously there's going to be a ton of talent in that draft class, not to mention free agency next year. We don't know how that's going to shape out. But regardless, I think Yaturgos Matos is a solid pick for the Bengals. At 34, I have the Colts going T. Higgins. They need a wide receiver, so it makes sense for them to nab one here. At 35, I have the Lions going Neville Gallimore, the interior defensive lineman out of Oklahoma. Fierce run stopper, can replace snacks really well, and I think he fits uh, Matt Patricia's style of defense. At 36, I have the Giants. They went linebacker in the first round. Now they get they get an offensive tackle in the second round, a guy that's quickly rising up draft boards, and that's Isaiah Wilson, the offensive tackle out of Georgia. At 37, I have the Chargers going Austin Jackson, the offensive tackle out of USC. You could argue Josh Jones or Austin Jackson here. I think both are really good players, but to me, I think Jackson fits more in Anthony Lynn's scheme. At 38, I have the Panthers going cornerback. Uh, they went Javon Kinlaw in the first round. I have them going AJ Terrell in the second round. Another guy like Fulton, that stock kind of went down out of the nat- after the national championship game where we saw him in the second half get roasted by Jamar Chase. But I think Terrell has had a solid college career. I think he started like 30 games. So I think uh, it would be a smart pick for the Panthers. At 39, now I know Dolphins fans probably won't like this because they've already gone tackle and they've already gone guard. But if you are able to solidify those two bookends in the first 39 picks, I think that's a really good job drafting for the Dolphins. They get Josh Jones and they get, um, now I'm blanking on, oh, Andrew Thomas. Yeah, so I think that's a really solid pairing as well as sliding Cesar Ruiz inside and Eric Flowers inside. I think that makes your offensive line troubles disappear almost immediately and you can focus on skill positions later in the draft. At 40, this one's kind of a lock to me. Uh, I've seen this in a lot of mock drafts, and it makes sense. Terrell Lewis has struggled with injuries his entire career at Alabama. Is a tremendous football player. Can get to the quarterback really uh, easily and well, and I think it's a solid pick for the Texans who need help off that edge ever since Judavion Clowney left. At 41, the Browns have to focus on safety in this draft, and they went tackle in the first round, which makes sense, obviously, because they had to get that other bookend alongside Jack Conklin. So it's Antoine Winfield, Junior, uh, the safety out of Minnesota, is going to be the pick for the Browns. At 42, uh, the Jaguars went secondary in the fo- first round, focused on that. Now they're going to go in, uh, defensive line here. Obviously, some gaps after the departures of uh, Calais Campbell and uh, not Taven Bryant, Marcel Darius. Uh, so I think Blacklock can f- fit right in there uh, immediately and start on day one. At 43, of the uh, the Bears going safeties, uh, Jeremy Chin out of Southern Illinois. Uh, Chin is a guy that's rise up a lot of draft boards. Uh, you can see it there. He's a sizable dude, has uh, elite athleticism, and I think pairing him with Eddie Jackson is a solid p- pick for the Bears. At 44, I have the Colts going Marlon Davidson, the interior defensive lineman out of uh, Auburn. Davidson is another guy that's quickly rising up draft boards, uh, can affect – uh, the offensive line from that interior spot really caused havoc. And I think the Colts who, um, yeah, they got to Forrest Buckner could use another piece and uh, Marlon Davidson could be that guy. At 45, uh, this comes with the trade with the Buccaneers. The Jaguars are going LaVisca Chenault, the wide receiver out of Colorado. Kind of falls here in this mock draft just due to team needs and whatnot, but I do think he's a solid player, and I do think that he's a first-round talent. Uh, another guy that dealt with injuries in his senior year, but again, can make an impact on day one for Jacksonville. At 46, I have the Broncos going Trayvon Diggs, cornerback out of Alabama. Yeah, you have Callahan and Bouye. Both those guys are getting up there in age for one, and Callahan had injury issues last year. So getting Trayvon Diggs, who can be a reliable number two or number three corner for Denver in the second round, would be a really smart pick. At 47, I have the Falcons addressing their interior defensive line. Obviously, they waited, traded back, and got Fulton in the first round. Now they're going Justin Matabuk in the second round. At 48, I have the Jets going Curtis Weaver, edge out of Boise State. I know I said that uh, 
it is it's a deep wide receiver class and they can go wide receiver in the second round if they go tackle in the first round but curtis weaver is almost too good to pass up on you trade away uh evan or sorry uh leonard williams and curtis weaver has never had a season at boise state under nine and a half sacks and that's not even when he played the entire season so uh consistent at getting tackles for loss i think he uh, led the nation in tackles for loss last year it was second to chase young and i know he was second uh to chase young and sat only second to Chase Young in stats, so uh, or sacks last year. So I think that it's a really solid player. He's low on a lot of people's boards, and this is obviously predict the pick, not what I would do. Curtis Weaver is my 30th best player in this draft, so to me it's a steal for the Jets. At 49, I have the Steelers going Lloyd Cushenberry, the interior offensive lineman out of LSU. Cushenberry put up consistent production on one of the best offensive lines in college football last year at LSU, and I think that the Steelers who need some help on their interior offensive line uh, go Cushenberry here. At 50, I have the Bears going Noah I. That's what we call him because that last name is scary and hard to pronounce. A cornerback out of Auburn, he was a track star, uh, has insane athleticism. I think that uh, the Bears go secondary here, focus on it, get Shin and get Noah I, and really solidify their secondary so they can focus on uh, – offense and stuff later in the draft because obviously that front seven is ridiculous if they fi fix that uh secondary then they'll be back to prime defense at 51 i'm sure the uh, cowboys would love to go corner here but to me uh, after terrell and Diggs and jaylon are all off the board whether it's in the second or first round there, there's a gap between the next level of cornerbacks. So the Cowboys are going to focus on another need and get Kyle Duggar, the sleeper safety out of Lenora Ryan, uh, a guy that is an insane athlete. I think he's like 6'2 and like 2'10 or something like that, and also has insane speed. Uh, so I think that pairing him um, up in that secondary, yeah, like I said, corner is obviously their number one need after they go chase on in the first round, but Kyle Duggar is a solid player, and you can rely on Chidobi Awuzie to be your number one guy next year. At 52, I have the Rams getting their Todd Gurley replacement and Jonathan Taylor running back out of Wisconsin. Taylor is my favorite player running back in this class. I think he's the most talented at strictly running the ball. Obviously, the fumbling problems are there, and also the fact that uh, he had a lot of carries in his first three seasons at Wisconsin, so he's already kind of worn down, if you will. It's a concern for teams, but pairing him with Daryl Henderson, I think, would make a really solid pairing. Uh, Taylor's more of that shifty guy, and Henderson is more of that, you know, I'll run through you guys. So two young running backs at the helm last, or next year for the Rams, I think, could be a solid pairing. At 53, this is from that Eagles trade. The Seahawks are going to go Julian Aquara, a guy that only played nine games last year due to injury, but I think he had, like, uh, seven or eight sacks the previous season, a guy that can get pressure to the quarterback and also force tackles for loss. So I think the Seahawks, who like their edge players, obviously Jadavion Clowney probably won't resign with them. Uh, this is going to be the pick. At 54, I have the Bills going Damon Arnett, the cornerback out of Ohio State. They need a little help in the cornerback room. Obviously, Tredavious White is a beast, but pairing him with Damon Arnett, I think, could be a really solid fit uh, in Buffalo. At 55, we have the Ravens going wide receiver. They need wide receiver, and I think Pittman alongside Marquise Brown and uh, Mark Andrews would make for one of the better young receiver receiving cores in the NFL. At 56, the Dolphins are going to go running back, and it's going to be J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State. Uh, pairing him with uh, Jordan Howard, I think, could be a really solid pairing. At 57, the Rams are going to go linebacker. Obviously, they lost Corey Littleton. Now they're going to get Willie Gay Jr., linebacker out of Mississippi State. Not the best in coverage, but can tackle really well and is, and is also better in coverage than any of the other linebackers remaining to me. So I think Willie Gay is the better, uh, the best linebacker available. At 58, the Falcons are going to pair Todd Gur or sorry, yeah, Todd Gurley with Clyde Edwards Alaire, the running back out of LSU. Edwards Alaire is my running back three, actually. Dobbins is my running back four. Uh, Alaire brings it to the table. I mean, running, catching, pass pro, I think he can really do it all. And uh, Todd Gurley does need the relief that we've seen him need last year due to his arthritis. I think uh, Edwards Alaire could be a solid uh, guy that can uh, take him out of the game and really put up similar production. At 59, I have the Seahawks going Ezra Cleveland, offensive tackle out of Boise State. Uh, sealing up their offensive line, I think, is a need for them. So uh, getting Aquara was a, a solid pick, and now you get Cleveland here. At 60, I have the Ravens going edge, and it's going to be Josh Uche out of Michigan. A guy that's an athletic freak. Uh, I think he got only like seven and a half sacks last year, but still good numbers and good tackle for losses and also can play in coverage due to his athleticism.
at 61. This is a guy that was a you know round one pick at the start of the year, but kind of his production fell off without his uh, partner in crime in Quinn and Williams this year at Alabama. So I do think he's still worth the second round pick, and uh, the the Titans need help on that interior defensive line. At 62, I have the Packers going Cole Kment, tight end out of Notre Dame. So starting right off the bat, they get Jalen Rieger and Cole Kment, two guys that can uh, provide receiving help for Aaron Rodgers. At 63, I have the Kansas City Chiefs going Cam Dantzler, the cornerback out of Mississippi State, a guy that can, uh, you know, play in zone, play in man, can really do it all, probably can be that cornerback three for the Chiefs. At 64, I have the Seahawks of Jurassic wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk, the freak athlete from Arizona State, can, you know, return, can receive, can really do it all. I think uh, getting him for the Seahawks is a fun weapon for Russell Wilson. All right, starting round three of this mock draft. At 65, I know the Bengals want wide receiver. I mentioned why earlier. Now they're going to go Robert Hunt, though. Uh, best player available, in my opinion. I think Hunt uh, brings a lot to the table, and if he wasn't hurt his whole career, I think we would be talking him as an early day two pick, probably in the top of the second round. But here he's at the start of the third round. At 66, a guy that was once a second round pick, but you know we have Isaiah Wilson rising up boards, Ezra Cleveland rising up boards. So Lucas Niang has kind of taken a hit uh, in his draft stock, but still a good player and a guy that can play right away for the Redskins at tackle. At 67, Darrell Taylor, a guy that's uh, you know, going up draft boards right now, uh, an athletic player off the edge for the Lions, I think is a perfect fit in Matt Patricia's defense. At 68, now the Jets finally go wide receiver. It's going to be KJ Hamler, the speed burner out of Penn State. At 69, this this is by no means a Luke Keekley replacement, but Akeem Davis-Gather is a solid player and linebacker out of App State and can be a rotational slash starter right away for the Panthers. At 70, this is a steal. In my opinion, Ashton Davis, the tracks are uh, a solid player at Cal, one of the better players on their defense, can slide in and start right away for Dolphins at safety. At 71, Chargers are going with their wide receiver three here. It's going to be Tyler Johnson, a clean route runner that can play on that boundary or slot, depending on what Keenan Allen's doing next year. But I love Johnson, and I think he's definitely worth a third or even second round pick, in my opinion. At 72, the Cardinals are going tackle. Like I said earlier, they went Derek Brown. Now they have to get a tackle, and I think Prince Tego Winoho can start right away alongside DJ Humphreys on that offensive line. Uh, at 73, we have the Jaguars going Jonathan Grenard, the edge out of Florida. Oh, yeah, that's a struggle with injuries, but I think when he's healthy, he makes an impact on the field. At 74, I have the Browns going Troy Dye, the linebacker out of Oregon. Lost Schobert and Kirksey in uh, this offseason. Obviously, Mac Wilson proved to be a solid player, and now they can pair him with Troy Dye, another third-round pick uh, that can come in and be you know, a solid tackler. Obviously, Mac Wilson is better in coverage, so you have that kind of one-two pairing uh, in Cleveland now. At 75, I have the Colts going hopefully with the quarterback of their future, and Jacob Eason out of Washington has the size, the uh, technique, and the mechanics to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. At 76, this is kind of a steal. The Buccaneers going Cam Akers, running back out of Florida State, a guy that's kind of a you know a, a, a tier lower than the first four running backs off the board, but still a guy that can make an immediate impact for the Bucks. At 77, um, a guy that can play center, can play guard, uh, you know, a versatile player, Jonah Jackson out of Ohio State, the interior offensive lineman, goes to the Broncos. At 78, I have the Falcons going linebacker to pair alongside Deion Jones. Jordan Brooks can come in and start right away at that LB2 spot for the Falcons. At 79, the Jets are going to go Bryce Hall, the cornerback out of Virginia. Uh, Bryce Hall has dealt with injuries, but to me is still uh, a second-round corner, and here he gets drafted in the third round for a steal by the Jets. At 80, the Raiders go Jalen Hurts, the quarterback out of Oklahoma. Yep, uh, this had been mocked before, but I do really like this pick. I think it's Mayock and Gruden style, and I think they can really make something out of Hurts if they give him a starting chance. Back-to-back -back picks here for the Raiders. Now they're going with another underrated pick, uh, player, in my opinion, Amik Robertson, cornerback out of Louisiana Tech. So I skipped one there. Uh, the Cowboys go Darnay Holmes, uh, cornerback out of UCLA. Now they get corner. Uh, Darnay Holmes, to me, is an underrated player, a really strong player at UCLA, and he could probably play uh, and start for the Cowboys at corner right away. At 83, this is going to be a rotational player on the Broncos defensive line. Rashard Lawrence uh, out of LSU has the size and strength, and I think him and Draymond Jones switching out while Shelby Harris and Jarrell Casey start on the defensive line will make for a really solid uh, rotation in Denver. 
At 84, I have the Rams going edge here. It's going to be Kenny Willikas out of Michigan State, a guy a lot like Curtis Weaver who has had consistent uh, production throughout his entire career. Just the mechanics and athleticism are lacking, and that's why he's low on people's boards, but I think it's a steal if the Rams are able to get him here. At 85, I have the Lions going wide receiver to pair alongside Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. It's going to be Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame. We saw him light it up at the Combine, really had his stock rising. I think he's definitely worthy of a third-round pick. At 86, back-to-back wide receivers here. John Brown and Cole Beasley are getting up there in age. Obviously, you brought in Stefan Diggs, but getting Donovan Peoples-Jones, who can slide in uh, and switch out with Cole Beasley at that slot position right away, I think is a solid pick for the Bills. At 87, I have the Patriots having a little quarterback battle next year between Jay Fromm and Jared Stenham. I think that's going to be fun to see who wins that. I think both of them can be successful in that uh, Belichick offense and Josh McDaniels offense. At 88, I have the uh, Saints addressing linebacker here, Malik Harrison. Linebacker of Ohio State, a really solid run stopper that can slide in and rotate uh, in that Saints defense. At 89, I have the Vikings going Devon Hamilton. Uh, they've obviously lost some huge pieces, along uh, one being Everson Griffin on that defensive line. So just adding as much talent as they can is uh, the number one priority besides getting a wide receiver and quarterback in this cornerback in this draft. At 90, I have the Texans going interior offensive lineman, Matt Hennessy out of Temple, um, an AAC guy that uh, I think is rising for a lot of people, and that can be a day one starter if he needs to for the Texans. At 91, I have the, uh, sorry, this is not the right pick. This should be Jordan Elliott. The interior defensive lineman for, out of Missouri, a guy that's rising up draft boards, has athleticism from that interior defensive line spot, got to the quarterback sometimes for Missouri, and I think he could be a good pick for the Raiders. At 92, I have Damian Lewis, the interior offensive lineman out of LSU. Uh, Lewis you know, played alongside Cushionberry, got production, and the Ravens do need to address interior offensive line at some point or another. Obviously, they're set at the tackle spot, but that doesn't mean that their interior offensive line can't use a boost. At 93, I have the Titans going Troy Pride Jr. out of Notre Dame. Uh, probably like the last of the starting cornerbacks in this draft class, in my opinion. Those guys that can slide it and then start at that cornerback three, uh, cornerback two spot right away here in the second and third rounds. But I think he's a good player, and the Titans obviously need corner. They lost Logan Ryan, so I like Troy Pride Jr. a lot. At 94, we have the Packers getting a steal here, in my opinion. Ben Barsh, offensive tackle out of St. John's. You might have known him from the Senior Bowl, lighting it up, or at the Combine, where he made that disgusting smoothie. Uh, regardless, he's a talented tackle uh, from a small school that I think can be uh, a solid Brian Beluga replace Beluga, Beluga, whatever, however you say his name, replacement for the Packers. At 95, this is from that Broncos trade. Uh, another typo, sorry about that. Um, Akeem Davis Gaither, linebacker out of Appalachian State, uh, or sorry, not Akeem Davis Gaither, um, Tyrell Burgess, safety out of Utah, a guy that's dealt with injuries, but I think is a solid player for the Panthers. At 96, this is a guy that to me was a one time a first rounder, now has kind of stumbled down draft boards, but I still think can be a day one starter for the Chiefs, and that's Tyler Biotish out of Wisconsin. At 97, the Browns are going to get a little help off the edge, a guy that can rotate uh, along uh, in. in Maybe one day be a starter for the Browns, but Nick Coe, edge out of Auburn. Obviously, that defensive line was one of the best of the best in the NFL last year, so he's a solid player. 98, the Patriots go Adam Troutman, the tight end out of Dateman. Troutman is a blocking beast and also can get open and uh, run really good routes, and obviously the Patriots are looking for a, a tight end ever since the loss of Gronk. At 99, of the Giants going Jabari Zuniga, the edge out of Florida, a guy that's de- another guy at Florida guy that's dealt with injuries but can play right away for the Giants. At 100, I have the Patriots going Colin Johnson, the wide receiver out of Texas, pairing him with Julian Edelman and Nikhil Harry. Harry I think uh, Johnson has the ability to start right away, has insane size, jumping ability, athleticism. It would be a scary sight in New England. At 101, I have the Seahawks getting uh, their Nick Finette replacement, if you will. Disley and Hunter Bryant could be one of their better uh, tight end pairings in the NFL, and I would really like to see uh, Russell Wilson have that availability alongside um, DK Metcalf, uh, Tyler Lockett, and the wide receiver that they drafted now, which I'm forgetting. At 102, the Steelers are solidifying their offensive line once again by getting Sadiq Charles, offensive tackle out of LSU. I said it about uh, Damian Lewis and... um, Lloyd Cushenberry, they had one of the best offensive lines in the uh, country last year. So I think that any player from this uh, team can one day be a starter in the NFL. 
at 103. This is via um, the Eagles trade. The Seahawks are going to get interior offensive line to Tain Moody out of Fresno State. At 104, I have the Rams also going offensive line. It's going to be Matt Pert, Pert, uh, however you say it, offensive tackle out of UConn. And then uh, I think this is the second to last pick, actually. I have the Vikings going edge, Bradley and they out of Utah, another guy that can rotate for the Vikings defensive line. And then finally, to wrap up this mock draft, I have the Baltimore Ravens going Zach Moss, running back out of Utah. I have a guy that I think is better than Justice Hill, in my opinion, and can really uh, be that guy that one day takes over for Mark Ingram in Baltimore. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's edition of my NFL mock draft. I will probably make one last mock draft before the draft, but uh, this is probably not going to change very much. The last one will only be two rounds. I decided to get a three-rounder out to you guys before uh, the draft came around, and then I'll probably also do a mock draft of what would I do. Uh, Let me know what you guys think, and uh, take it easy. Peace.